you said something that I can't let go. Like we cannot end this interview or we could and, and have a part two, but you said something about why the reason not to have affiliates, right? <laughs> or something about that. Tell us yeah. what's going on there. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Now let's get started. Um, you know, the next kind of things I'd love to cover, you know, it's two parts, so we can split it up, but I'm thinking, you know, what, what, in, if, if I'm creating a course, um, what do I need in place to start reaching out to affiliates and what are, what are some tips or recommendations about either, uh, places or ways to reach out to affiliates without annoying them or whatever, you know, spamming them. Yeah. So, yeah. So first would be, what do you need in place first? And then second, how to? Well, let, let's go in reverse. Okay, um, sure. Because I think it's important to understand what you're going to be doing and then we'll kind of back into it. Um, I mean, how do you reach out? It, it's at its simplest form. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to very much oversimplify this. Um, but in its simplest form, you're going to reach out to somebody and you're going to say, I have this product. Here's how we're going to launch it. We have this three video series, two eBooks, this webinar series, et cetera, et cetera. Would you be interested in promoting this to your audience? Uh, supporting this launch is kind of mm -hmm. the, the language that we typically use. Now, right. again, that's an oversimplification because I skipped like, well, how do I find these people? Right. You know, where do I start? All those things. But th there is a very lengthy process to this that we'll get to. Um, one, you start with people that you already know you have a relationship with. For argument's sake, let's just say that's five people and mm -hmm. that they have a small list. Well, you reach out to them and you say, hey, would you be interested in this? Um, you start with that low-hanging fruit. The second thing is you you find people who are promoting other similar products. Um, you know, right now we have a, because we do so much recruitment for our clients. We, I mean, literally any given day, our virtual assistants are scouring the internet. They are, we're subscribed to no exaggeration, more than a thousand lists. And we're seeing wow. who's promoting what. And if somebody promote, just, you know, if, if so-and-so sends an email out and says, um, Hey, go check out this free video series from Joe Smith. Then we're like, wait, Joe Smith. Let's go look what, who's promoting Joe Smith's product about, you know, their new course about how to grow your email list, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go look that up. They're scouring Google for who's writing posts about um, different, you know, topics and, and different things, uh, different course names, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're literally, we're looking for, um, quite frankly, we're looking for competitors and mm -hmm. ancillary, you know, kind of tangential products. So, uh, using Ray Edwards Copywriting Academy as an example. I'll come back to that just because we just finished it. Um, we're going to look up who's promoting other copywriting courses, but we're going to also look up who's promoting um, entrepreneurial courses, who's mm -hmm. promoting marketing courses, who's promoting social media, you know, selling on social media, who's promoting landing page design, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Those are all related to copywriting. All right. And if you have an audience that, you know, you have 10,000 people on your list and 200 of them are, you know, a hundred of them just bought a course on landing page design. You can't tell me that you don't have a pretty engaged audience that would be interested in possibly buying a copywriting course. Cause what is good landing page design without good copy? It's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, those are, you know, the ways to find affiliates. Um, nice. I mean, Google can be your best friend. Go subscribe to every um, list that you, every internet marketer's list that you can. And when they promote something, go subscribe to their list. Opt in to people's, you know, uh, marketing campaigns. Opt into their pre-launch sequences and, you know, study that stuff. Um, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I bought something as a result of a pre-launch sequence. It's probably been a long time, but I watch them like crazy. I'm almost desensitized, but I'm always looking <laughs> for that next little thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, just it, it's, it can kind of turn into rabbit hole. I mean, ultimately that's why people, cause you could, you could go down and be like, Oh, they're promoting this. Oh, but they're promoting this. And then, you know, it's like it never, it's a never ending spider web. Ultimately that's why people hire companies like us to, to do this for them. Cause right. you cannot possibly, you know, do that on your own. But if you can start with those first 20 or 30 people, 
that's really where you get started. Now, I want to go back to kind of what you do and you have in place beforehand, and then I'll actually walk you through this process. And then I'm going to tell you something kind of shocking, and that's why you shouldn't have affiliates, at least oh, at first. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so before you reach out to anyone, I don't care if it's the lowest hanging fruit. I literally don't care if it's your like housemate, mm-hmm. you know, your spouse or <laughs> your best friend that you've been friends with for 27 years. Before you reach out to anybody about promoting your stuff, you test it yourself. You got to have a, a tested funnel. So if you have an existing list, even if it's a thousand people, if it's just 500 people, you launch to that list, you test stuff, you get at least, you figure out something that doesn't work and something that works. One thing, like you figure out something that you try that's, well, that was a dumb idea. You know, mm-hmm. I tried, uh, well, this video was terrible. You know, it didn't convert. Or I tried this phrase and it didn't work. I tried this price point and it didn't work you know, versus this price point. Oh, we discovered that wording it this way was just better than this way. And you can learn that from a thousand people. You don't need tens of thousands of people to start split testing. The next step is you go test it with cold traffic. So you do go do Facebook ads. Like I have never once said, don't do Facebook ads. Don't do LinkedIn ads. I've said that that can't be your only source of revenue. Right. So you go test it with uh, some cold traffic. And, and what we found is, Affiliate traffic is somewhere in the, there's somewhere between um, the person over here who's been on your list for six months and the, they know, like, and trust you and the person who came in through Facebook yesterday. Mm-hmm. Affiliate traffic tends to be a little bit closer to this side, the side that's warmer, but it's not, you know, it's not like right here either. And so you go do some Facebook traffic and you test stuff, you know, well, this person's coming in cold. Literally, they saw your advertisement. And they clicked on it and they are making, you know, now you're asking them 17 days later to make a buying decision. Mm -hmm. Well, what language do you use? What landing page do you use? What sequence do you take them through? So ultimately that can be summed up in before you reach out to anybody, you have to have a tested funnel. Mm -hmm. So you have the tested funnel, you take them through with that cold traffic. Then you start reaching out and you start doing one-off JVs. And so one-off JVs means I come to you, Devin, and I say, hey, I've got this course. Here's what I have done already. Mm -hmm. I've tested it with my internal list. And and by the way, any of these steps are rinse and repeat. They're like shampoo. You -hmm. know, Um, there's no limit on how many times you can do this before you feel like, okay, I've got this down. So I come Mm -hmm. to you and I say, I've tested this to my own list. In fact, I've done it twice. I've done two launches to my list. And here's what I learned. I've also been doing cold traffic. We've had 1,100 people go through the funnel. Here's the conversion rate. Here's what we've learned. This mm-hmm. is a fairly tested funnel, but I need to take the next step. So Devin, I'm asking you as a friend, would you promote this to your list? Can we get this on your calendar in, in a couple, you know, in a month or two? Now, to be clear, you don't necessarily, these are not sequential. Because if you do these okay. in sequence, you launch to your list and then you wait a while and then you do launch to your list again, and then you do cold traffic and you're doing, then I mean, it'd be like, I agree with me, it's going to be like 19 months before I ever launch my freaking course, <laughs> right. with, you know, with a big JV launch. You, you do these you know, kind of they're overlapping. So maybe after your first launch, your internal launch, you come to, you know, your friend and say, Hey, Devin, if you have a friend named Devin, that'd be so cool. But you know, you go and say, Hey, Devin, listen, I've, I've been doing this. I've already tested internally. I'm, I just started testing some cold traffic and, and here's what I'm learning. Can we get you on the calendar for two months from now? And you get them on the the calendar for two months from now. And you do those, a series of those one-offs you know, one at a time. And they, again, you could be doing them back to back to back to back to back. Like every week people are mm-hmm. entering your funnel through a different JV partner, but you're treating it like a launch. You're treating this like, um, this person is literally their own independent launch. Mm-hmm. Now to get those people, you say, Hey, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be split testing traffic. I'm, I'm still testing. I'm trying new things because this is warmer traffic, but it's not hot. It's definitely not cold. And so I just want you to to know that. Is that cool if I test some stuff? Like if, can I, can I have you test some different copy in your emails and on the landing page? Can we try a few things? Can we break a few things together? And in return for that, this is where I said earlier, there are times where you could go over that 50% mark. Hey, I realized this might not convert as well as it could. It also might convert great. You just don't know but I'm going to give you an enhanced commission. I'm going to pay you a 60% commission in return for you helping me out. These are the people that are not in it for the money and they are not going to look at your stuff and go, well, normally when I promote a launch, it converts at 7.2. This is how people talk in internet marketing world, right? 
it converts at 7.2%, but yours only converted at 4.9. I'm angry with you now. <laughs> you know, no, that's they're doing it because you're Devin. They're doing it because they're they know, like, and trust you. They're a friend of yours. And I would not do the first one with somebody with 150,000 people on their list unless they're willing to segment it. I would pick people that have a five to 25,000 person list. Um, and again, it's it's all about this rinse and repeat. And then somewhere in the three to nine month range, you're ready for, you know, you're ready for big time. But that's the sequence that we suggest clients go through. So when somebody comes to us and says, well, you run our launch. I've never launched before. Our answer is immediately no. Like, nope. Right. Here's the process you have to go through. Cool. Wow. Yeah, I think that answers a lot of questions that, you know, questions that I've had, actually. And, you know, it gives us a, a map, you know, for how to how to get to that place. Because, you know, I in my experience, it's hard to find, you know, what you just shared out, out here to this, uh, to the online course creation summit, you know, it's, there's, a, there's that process. So you know, testing it to your own audience, testing cold traffic, um, and then going into and doing one off, joint venture promotions with like, you know, yep. to someone's list test. And I like what you said, you know, you're, you're working, you're basing it on the relationship that you already have with them. It's not aiming to be a huge launch. It's, um, and you may give them an enhanced commission because the conversion, cause you're still testing some things. So those are some cool yep. leverage points and, you know, ways to frame it. And then, and then finally, you know, time frame depending on how, how many times iterations you can do it before you get, clear and comfortable with it than going big. Um, so, you know, and I do want to say one more thing. There's no yeah. reason to say that like you haven't even created your course and you're reaching out to some people that again are good friends of yours and saying at some point in the near future, would you be interested in this? I did that. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, uh, we've got a new, uh, coaching program workshop type thing coming out. And I, I just went to some people and said, Hey, I'm thinking about launching this next year. Mm -hmm. Um, would you be willing to to do some stuff? Would you be willing? Can, can we get you on the calendar for like next fall? Mm -hmm. And I think I think I reached out to five people, you know, that were medium sized, about fifteen to twenty thousand, twenty five thousand person list, and all five of them said absolutely. You know, right. and so there's courses isn't even done, the, or the, the program isn't even put together. I literally couldn't tell you how many weeks it's going to be. Couldn't even tell you what we're going to do in it. I just, mm -hmm. I literally gave them like the title in a one sentence overview and they said, yeah. And, um, and I think that's what, you know, go ahead and do it now. Like I would much rather you, I think, let me back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm passionate about this because I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they think that they have to go in sequence mm -hmm. and that they have to like, well, I have to create the course. It has to be perfect. I've got to, you know, got to make sure my color sequence scheme is right. And but the title, you know, like, and, and I can't tell anybody about this cause I'm embarrassed. You know, like I, I just did it, you know, like there's that voice in me saying, man, this is embarrassing having this conversation when I'm going to talk to this person and they might ask me questions that I don't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. But I was just honest with them. It was like, well, how long is it going to, how long is it going to last? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, four to 12 weeks, pretty broad mm -hmm. range. Uh, what's the price point? Not sure yet. Nine ninety seven to 1997, somewhere in that range. Are there any upsells? Yeah, I've got some ideas. Here are my ideas. Could be this, could be that. What about downsells? Yeah, we got like 12 ideas for that. Could be like, you know, what's it called? Don't know yet. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, here, here's like the tentative title. That title sucks. I know. That's why it's tentative. <laughs> you know, it's right. like, don't be embarrassed by the fact that you don't have it all figured out on day one mm -hmm. and just reach out to those people. And, you know, again, people that you know, like, and trust that you have good relationships with. If you're in a mastermind, those type of people, if you're in a, an online forum, you know, those type of people and just say, Hey, here's the gist of what I have. You don't need a fancy one page PDF. You don't need a landing page design yet. You don't need a logo. Oh my gosh. The number of people that think they need a flipping logo before they mm. launch something is infuriating. Mm. And the reason it's infuriating is because I used to, hi, my name is Matt. And I used to think I needed a logo before I launched something. You don't need a logo. You uh -huh. certainly don't need a logo that costs you $300 before you launch something. Um, I put together the most butt ugly word document, with <laughs> black text. And it was like, here's what this is about. And I got five out of five people with a cum cumulative list size of over a hundred thousand people to say yes, because I had the relationship and, beca and because I asked, because most people won't ask them. Right. Right. That's so, key. So, so ask. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. So the counter, you know, so you're going to test 
things out, do that, the larger process, but there's nothing wrong with having just the concept together and going out to those people that, you know, like in trust and saying, Hey, can you just save the date? Or would you be interested, you know, around the bend, you know, a couple months down the road, just promoting this potentially we'll work out the details in the meantime. I mean, of course I'm launching this course, but uh, you know, going through that process. So having, Reaching out at an early stage is not something to avoid. Don't wait till you're a perfectionist. I, exactly. I really like that. I think that's key. I think that's key to the whole process, um, you know, of course, creation. And it, it's also a hard thing to deal with, like, you know, having things because you, if you're just starting out, you want to have all your ducks in a row. You know, you want to have it to look together to demonstrate it because you might not have uh, all the relationships that you have or, um, you know, you might not have a ton of credibility. So it's important to have a certain level, but I totally agree with you because having, getting in the conversation, I've found, you know, holes in my plan that from people asking me questions about it. So it's like, there's almost, there's no way to have it perfect anyways. Well, and just from a very practical standpoint, I get pitched all the time where people will reach out to me and it's, it's as if they're trying to literally send me every piece of information they could about something in one uh-huh. fell swoop. Mm-hmm. And, we, and I've made that mistake where it's like, Hey, we've got a launch coming up. Here's, you know, and the, the, the email is this long. And Oh, and by the way, I've also attached a gigantic document that I expect yeah. you to read. Are you interested? <laughs> and I never get responses. And I wonder why. And what uh-huh. works is this email. Hey, um, I'm going to use Ray Edwards as again as an example. Um, I'll use Jeff Goins this time. Hey, Jeff Goins is launching his Tribe Riders course again in October. Um, if you're not familiar with you know Tribe Riders, here's the target audience. Boom, super quick. Are you interested in supporting the launch as a as a JV? Question mark Matt. Like that's the email. Yeah. Three sentences. Those I, I basically either get one of three responses. Absolutely doesn't work for me. Send me more information. Now that they have initiated the send me more information, now is the time where I can then send them the 17 sentence doc, you know, email with a PDF, four page PDF and, you know, a bunch of other stuff. That's the time when we can do that. But mm-hmm. so that's the thing. It's like, it's almost like beautiful if you don't have it figured out. Cause it's like, Hey, I'm launching a course. Here's what it's about. Are you interested? Done. Um, so that's, yeah, that's cool. I, I'm sitting here going, oh shoot, what did I send you <laughs> to, to invite you on the summit? I think I did pretty good, but we should go back and look at it. But yeah, I, you know, I was doing that, not as succinct as that probably even, but yeah, I think that's great because then you're getting permission, not overwhelming, um, you know, keep it simple. And then it doesn't take a lot of time too. That's really cool. Yeah. So thanks for that. And I know you got- you're more likely to get a yes the less you say. Oh, okay. It's, it's ironic. That's awesome. So I know you have to go now or just in a minute. I've got, I've got so, a few minutes. Let's, okay. uh, I want to make sure There's we answer something. any, any practical or tactical. Let's got to write that yeah. one down. That rhymes. Um, practical or tactical <laughs> okay. uh, questions. Yeah. More than happy. Well, great. Great. Well, you had, you said something that I can't let go. We, like we cannot end this interview or we could and, and have a part two, but you said something about, why the reason not to have affiliates, right? Mm-hmm. Or something about that. Tell us yeah. what's going on there. Uh, and before before we, okay. we go, I do want to make sure that uh, I've got something special for the for oh. the viewers. So don't let me forget to mention that at the okay. end too. Okay. Um, I'm getting really good at this teasing thing, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, really, that's kind of what we just talked about. Is the the other mistake I see is okay. I see the one mistake of not bringing on partners, not bringing on affiliates or JVs. Um, but the other mistake I see is I've got this course. It's awesome. This is the best course in XYZ market. Mm-hmm. I want every affiliate partner to promote this right now. First launch out of the gate. Mm. Here's the reality. There's something wrong with your course. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's, that's, that's, that's reality. Um, it might be 5%. It might be an A minus. Would you really want to sell an A minus product? Sure. At the start, we all have to start somewhere. I don't, I don't mind selling a C minus product to start with, but you want to get it to A plus. Two, just like I said, there's something wrong with your marketing. There's something on your landing page that's not right. There's something in your messaging that's not right. There's something in your sales video that's not right. I know this because it always happens. Mm. It's always the case. But you learn stuff from launching to your list first, then launching to cold traffic, and then launching with a few 
partners. Now, if this is your seventh time launching a similar product, you know, you've right. been around for a while and, and you know, that kind of thing. And I, truth is probably many of most of you watching aren't launching your mm-hmm. seventh product. Mm-hmm. Um, you can expedite those steps. Mm-hmm. You can go internal list, a little bit of cold traffic, f- few, you know, maybe one small partner just to tweak some stuff and then boom, you're going big. You could even skip the small partner one. I mean, there, there is an expedited process. It's the same reason why if you look at like, you know, the, the, the length of dating among, you know, 30 somethings before they get married versus 20 somethings, it's typically a lot shorter, you know, because right. it's like, I know what I want. And like, yep, you're it. Okay. We're getting married. You know, that's the process. <laughs> it's not like this long drawn out thing where I'm still trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And if you're going to be a part of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, if you've been around the block a few times, it's definitely a compressed timeline. You know, it could be a two, three month timeline as opposed to a three to, you know, nine month timeline. Um, but yeah, that's why that, you know, we recommend when people approach us and say, again, uh, will you run our, will you run our launch? How many times have you launched this product? Zero. Um, no, <laughs> we will not. We have made that mistake with huge names. I mean, we've had opportunities to work with some of the biggest names in, in I mean, not just in online marketing, but literally in the world, Mm-hmm. And it always backfired because they, they hadn't launched before and we screwed stuff up and they screwed yeah. stuff up. And, and where we make the mistakes is just lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Just not No, it's like, we think the answer is, oh my gosh, that's like the worst thing in marketing is I think the answer is this sentence. And it's no, it's actually this other sentence or, you know, it's this price point. No, it's actually this price point. Um, so you want to know that stuff before you go big. Right. Okay. So test it out, get the, yeah. Okay, cool. Cause yeah. Why would you want to magnify basically when you go big, you're magnifying whatever you've got. Right. So why would you want to magnify something that's got all these problems going to yeah. have all these customer service what's, issues? Not What's the problems. saying that, uh, what's it? Good marketing just makes a bad product fail faster. I think it is, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but you know, the flip side to it is when you're going to the big names in this industry and saying, will you promote my product? Will you promote my course? Um, Let me give you two scenarios. Hey, this course is awesome. It's the best in the industry and you're going to make a lot of money Mm -hmm. versus, hey, here are 15 testimonials we've gotten from people who are similar to your audience. Here are those 15 testimonials. In the last last time we did this, the average EPC, that's earnings per click, was $7.92 for our top 10 people. Um, We would expect that if, you know, based on your performance, if you sent 3,000 opt-ins, you're going to make $11,412 in commissions plus these prizes, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, Here's the conversion rate on opt-ins to sales. It's 7.9%. That'd be actually a little high. We'll go with 4.7%. That's more realistic. You know, it's 4.7% with an opt-in rate of 57%. When you go to them with like specific data that they can literally plug into something and go, okay, this is something we should promote or no, it's not a good fit. You go to them with specific testimonials. Um, the, the, the statistical probability of them promoting is so infinitely higher than like, Oh, you can make a lot of money. (laughs) it's really good course. Like some people said some good things about it. No, you like specific testimonials, um, you know, things like that. We, we take, we literally will take testimonials where they mention the person's name Mm. and send it to them. Like I, you know, I also took so-and-so's course and this course is a perfect complement to that. Or, um, you know, I'm so thankful I, you know, I went through so-and-so's course, which introduced me to so-and-so who introduced me to this, you know, it's like, it works. So, you know, that's why I say it's like that specificity and not trying to just go out and say, oh, this course is going to be awesome because it's probably not the first time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. That, yeah, I think that's really helpful to have that in mind. And, you know, before we go, I just, because you started talking about just to gauge what those conversions are worthwhile, like, or, you know, as, as in somebody approach someone at, so like, um, you know, like from the opt-in to sales, can you, can you give us like a range of, it's, you know, con- opt-in? Place. What was that? It, it is all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Based on audience and price. Oh, okay. And, um, oh man. I mean, I, it's literally... Yeah, if you're yeah. if your opt-in rate is ten percent, you're doing something wrong. 
Okay. But I mean, yeah, I've yeah. seen opt-in rates in the high 30%, like mm-hmm. it's that low. And I've seen opt-in rates in the, in the mid to upper 60s. I've actually okay. seen them for, for, for short periods of time for like, you know, 24 to 48 hours. I've seen them in the low 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really does depend on, on what you're doing. Um, and it depends on the yeah. price point ultimately for sales percentage. But the, the, the magic number that you're really looking for is an EPC, an earnings per click of, I mean, we really have found like if it's not $5, it's not really ideal for us. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that will promote stuff at two dollars and three dollars. Okay. It it really depends on the product, right? Um, okay. And how like it's one of those things. Like, well, I promote a four fifty product that's a great fit for a perfect fit for my audience, or a seven dollar pro, you know, seven dollar EPC for something that's not a great fit. Well, no, I'm going to promote the mm-hmm. four fifty. That's great, and I'm also going to you know all things being equal or even close to equal or not equal, <laughs> I'm going to promote my friends. You know, right. Jeff, Jeffrey Gittimer used to say, all things being equal, people buy people buy from those they like. All things not being equal, people buy from those they like. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, it's wow. the same reason why we've all spent $2,000 too much on a car. Because <laughs> we like the guy. He's a friend. You know, and we, yeah. just, we know we're going to be taken care of. And so the same is true. But if, you're, if you can, try to get a near $5 EPC. And so let, let's just run through what that looks like. Oh, cool. a, an affiliate sends 1,000 hits. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use round numbers. They send exactly 1,000 hits. It'd be amazing if somebody did that. And they convert exactly 500 of them into an opt-in. Uh-huh. Now, for fi- for a $5 EPC, that means they need to make $5,000 on, on 5,000 hits. So how do we get to $5,000 know, $5, on 500 opt-ins? Well, that means you need an, on a $1,000 product, on an exactly $1,000 product, means you need to sell five. And you sell exactly five of them, which would be 1% of the opt-ins. Mm-hmm. Well, technically no, because they're getting a, let's just, again, for round numbers, they're getting a 50% commission. That actually means you need to sell 10 of them to get to $5,000. So the affiliate's EPC would be $5 on those 1,000 hits. So that means they need to sell 10, which would be 2% of the opt-ins, you know, initially 1% of the original Traffic, which are which are actually low numbers for this example. Mm-hmm. Um, typical on a thousand dollar product, opt in to sale is going to be somewhere between like three point two and four point four, somewhere in that range. I think I've seen it. I've seen it as low as three point two, and I've seen it as high as north of four point four. But that's been rare. Um, so yeah, I mean that gives you an idea. You know, again, the, yeah, you just run the calculations, and you can do that on. We actually have a formula we, when we've taken from our clients and we figured out like if you want to replicate what affiliate traffic will look like in, th- again, I'm using even round numbers here. You get a thousand people from your list and a thousand people from Facebook. Mm-hmm. That's 2000 people. You look at their opt-in percentage and you look at their sales percentage and you, you multiply that by 1.1. I know this is like getting really complicated, but the reason is um, the, again, because your, your affiliate traffic is closer to your internal traffic than cold Facebook traffic. So right. you're enhancing the conversions of Facebook a little bit. So yeah. you take the Facebook stuff and multiply it by 1.1, you take yours and then you just figure out. And so like, again, in those examples, you have 2000 people coming through Um you let's say you sell exactly 20 units in the end. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that work out to? 20 units out of 2000 is 2%, thousand dollar course. I mean, that would work out to about a $5, you know, EPC. Um, if you were paying a 50% commission, it, it would be a little bit higher. Cause again, multiply the Facebook traffic by 1.1. 1. 1. Um, but that's how you actually arrive at it. And when we do that, when we predict, when we take our clients and we predict those numbers, they're scary accurate. Like wow. we're, we're off by like tenths of a percent, <laughs> you know? Wow. Wow. And, uh, and I, my favorite quote was from one of our clients, Jeff Goins, who's at goinswriter.com. He said, um, he was telling his new COO last year. He said, sometimes it sounds like Matt, it sounds like those guys pull the numbers out of their butt, but they're, they're, they're <laughs> but they're gold, <laughs> you know? And I was like, Jeff, are you saying I'm pooping gold nuggets? And he's like, exactly. Uh, so, you know, they are. I mean, it's just, it's a spreadsheet that we plug it in. We can, t- you know, like nice. you can take this and then go, okay, this launch is going to make $117,000. And sure enough, the launch makes $121,000 or $109,000. I mean, they're, 
they're accurate and, and the, the percentages are, are accurate too, because when you have that internal plus Facebook or, or LinkedIn for that matter, then we can, we can plug those in. And, you know, there are variables of course, like, well, your internal list is three months old. My internal list is four years old. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Naturally they're going to be a little bit different, mm-hmm. but for the most part, the numbers work out. So. If anybody wants to know what your projected affiliate EPC is, that's the formula is you take your internal traffic and then you take your Facebook traffic and multiply it by 1.1. Mm-hmm. You combine them into, again, into an even number. So if it's, if you have 5,000 internal and 2,000 Facebook, then adjust accordingly, mm-hmm. but plug those together and you figure out your, your hits to your sales in that, and then multiply that by whatever the affiliate commission is, let's say 0.5 or 0.4. And there's your EPC. That's awesome. That's so cool. I mean, and back to what you're saying about knowing those numbers when you reach out, I bet if you have that level of detail when you're reaching out to people, um, that's going to make them somewhat, you know, those people that are more on the edge of they don't know you yet as much as you'd like them to. But yeah, I think that'll drive them through. So, And I always do lowball just a little bit, admittedly. That's okay. Uh, Yeah. I'd rather not get somebody than get somebody that ends up hating me. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Um, so I do tend to lowball. So like I'll say, hey, you know, here's our, here were our top 10 last time. And I will be honest with them. And I'll say, you know, like these were rock stars. So I'm just letting you know that like, here's the projected, you know, EPC. Like we see that so often where it's like, well, last time it was $5 and 12 cents, but we've improved our landing page and it's going to be so yeah. much bigger this time. I'm like, no, I'd actually just not say that. Mm. I'd rather say it's going to be five dollars and twelve cents, and they find out. Oh my gosh, it was eight bucks, and they're like, "Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know." Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have I'd rather them say no mm-hmm. than have them disappointed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that relation, you know, it's saying you burn a bridge, it's burned. Like you are not rebuilding that bridge in this industry. You're done yeah. forever, and they're gonna. And this is this is a very small industry. Like mm-hmm. you could. The reality is 20,000 people could attend the summit and 20,000 people aren't creating a course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We live in a very small ecosystem in this online marketing world. And so you, you screw somebody over, you do something bad. I'm going to tell you right now, it will get around so fast. Wow. Um, yeah. So just, that's not a, it's not a, to scare anybody, but it is to warn you that like, just don't, don't do stuff wrong. <laughs> you know, like yeah. doesn't have to be perfect. Just, yeah, I'll leave yeah. it at that. Don't burn bridges. Yeah, that's cool. So I like that we're, you know, wrapping it with that kind of the the bigger picture, you know, kind of the wisdom of it, of business is like, you know, these are relationships and it's better to, you know, to, um, you know, undersell and over deliver or whatever. I don't know the language, but you know what I'm saying? You know, it's yeah. like, it's like, let's, let's, let's bring it down even the expectation a little bit so that it's, it's higher. So, because then next time they'll be interested. So, and, and thinking in terms of, even though we're in this global um, online market to realize how, how small it is and how our relationships, uh, it's not anonymous. People know that. So I think that's really key. So I I love that you threw that in there here at the end. So we're about at that time to wrap up and you mentioned you have something that you'd like to share with folks. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you. I'm really curious what you got. Yeah. So Go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash OCCS for online course creation summit. So mattmcwilliams.com forward slash OCCS. And uh, I've got a free email course that I'm literally putting together right now. Like as you and I are doing this, I'm putting it together. So by the time they watch this, it'll be totally live. Uh, It's just, it's an email course on everything that we've talked about and a whole lot of stuff that we didn't get to. <laughs> and uh, so I'll take you through that launch process and, and, you know, kind of step one, step two, step three. And um, yeah, so go to mattmcclinics.com forward slash OCCS. You can grab that totally free. And I look forward to uh, serving you guys more with that information. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to check it out. I'm going to grab my copy as well. And um, gosh, I have to just say, thank you so much, Matt, for coming on here. I mean, you have really... You've taken us through a ton in this short amount of time of all these processes. I know a lot of questions, you know, from people that are creating courses. I know you're answering those because I've been working with so many folks. So thank you for all of your generosity here today, bringing it to the online course creation summit and for just sharing so much with us today and I look forward to connecting further down the road. Oh, my pleasure, Devin. Thanks so much for having me. All right. And again, you guys go to mattmcwilliams.com slash OCCS to get your goodies. 
And um, we look forward to catching you on the next episode. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast.